Hello everyone, my name is Danelle Gonzalez. I would first of all like to thank you all for being here today. Today, we are gonna to be talking about plundering the Egyptians, or in this case, Hollywood. The Chronicles of Narnia is a story of four children who are taken from the real world into a fanciful creation called Narnia. They soon realize that they have been chosen by Aslan, a greatly feared and respected lion to rule this kingdom. And throughout their teen years, they are continually called to visit the land. But when each child reaches the age of adulthood, Aslan explains to them that although they loved the land, it was time for them to go back home. And this time, there would be no return. When Lucy, the youngest of the four, asks Aslan if she will ever see him again, he replies, I am in your world, but there I have another name. You must learn to know me by that name. This was the very reason why you were brought to Narnia, that by knowing me here for a little, you may know me better there. For film viewers, a journey into film can be similar to that of the Pevensies into the world of Narnia. A journey that transforms worldview. But what is worldview? Worldview is the way that people perceive the world around them and what they believe to be true, which then influences their habits, actions, and attitudes towards others. To better understand why you should use movies to shape worldview, let's take a look at the story of film. I will begin with a history of art because movies, after all, are a combination of several different types of art. It all began with the questions that arose from man's longing to understand life and purpose. People began to express what they believed were the answers to these questions through art, which in the ancient times were categorized into history, tragedy, poetry, dance, comedy, music, and astronomy. But this definition changed over time. By the 16th century, what people considered art was closer to what we today consider art. Paintings, drawings, sculpture, and architecture. This redefinition allowed an unfortunate split between art and science that we can still see today. Film took its first steps in 1895. Most of the first movies were filled with religious themes and were even created by evangelists. Movies quickly recognized the power of the cinema and showed movies with biblical themes. Movies were a good source of entertainment for the church and the church was helping the film industry succeed. This was a mutually beneficial relationship that faded around the 1920s. Protestants, Catholics, and the general public were unsettled by the way people were starting to watch movies. So, the church issued a legion of decency, stating that Hollywood should not produce anything against Christian moral standards. And if they did, Christians should not watch them. This worked for a short period until World War II, when people wanted an entertainment as a way of escaping the horrors that they had just experienced. They wanted to view immoral content with the purpose of escaping reality. And by the 1970s, it was realized that what Hollywood produced could no longer be controlled. Robert Johnston believed that the church needed a broader and more informed approach to Christian understanding and interpretation of film. He believed that dialogue, not censorship, was being called for. This dialogue between church and Hollywood should be considered especially important today now that media, which largely consists of film, is one of the main platforms for communication. Not acknowledging that film has a major role in shaping culture is more dangerous today than ever. Today, 78% of Americans own a smartphone, which is the main media streaming device. The more people have the chance to experience film, the more power it has. And with this number in mind, the question is no longer if film is affecting society, but how. John Calvin wrote that instead of abstaining from secular writing, Christians should embrace truth, beauty, and goodness wherever it is found. When he said that we should learn from that light of truth, which is admirably displayed in their works, that if we believe the spirit of God is the only fountain of truth, we shall neither reject or despise the truth wherever it is found, unless we wish to insult the spirit of God. Film should serve as a tool in shaping a worldview consistent with the kingdom of God, because film is already shaping worldview in today's culture. Christians should care about the kingdom of God, and the process aligns with the classical method of learning and can be measured. Film is already shaping worldview in today's culture. The industry began with making 120 movies in 1980 to making 792 in the year 2019 alone. Technology has made it possible for people to consume media in levels never before imagined. The greater the reach of film, the greater the influence. And this influence has been evident for years. For example, in 1934, Bambi caused a $4.7 million decrease in deer hunting. Mississippi burning was proven to be educational 
companies quickly recognized the power of the movie's message and used them to increase sales. And policymakers urged directors to make short films with anti-drug messages. Neil Gabler, an American journalist, wrote that film is arguably the most pervasive, powerful, and ineluctable force of our time. Today, because of technology, 31% of people watch more than 21 movies a year. Netflix states that 52% of their users stream one to 10 hours a week. And this is just one of today's main streaming services. Now you might be thinking that this issue is not as important to Christians because we do not partake in media as much as others, but the evidence says otherwise. Statistics show that Christians watch an average of 3.5 hours a day, while atheists and agnostics average at around 2.7 hours. The Pew Research Center conducted a survey identifying trends for Christians coping with COVID and found that the number one activity was, you guessed it, it was watching movies. Barna found that the second most con common activity Christian teens do with their mother is watch films together. Statistics also show that 19% of Americans watch movies every day and the time spent on religious activities ranges from two to 17 minutes a day. The conclusion then is that avoiding film isn't a realistic solution. Now you might be saying, yes, I do occasionally like to eat some popcorn and watch a movie on the weekends, but I don't see how that changes the way I live. Based on statistics and history, film is substantially influencing people. In fact, Barna found that 51% of people believe there's a connection between violent movies and violent behavior. Michelle Pouts, a professor of political science, conducted a study on the power of film and found that 25% of people change their perception of the government after having watched Argo or Zero Dark Thirty. According to Barna Research, Passion of the Christ, a movie with comparatively low viewership, resulted in 13 million people changing some aspect of their religious behavior, and around 11 million people changing some pre-existing religious beliefs. What makes film so effective in shaping worldview? The power of film not only resides on its widespread reach, but its ability to simplify ideas. Hitler once said that film has greater possibilities because it brings them in a much briefer time, the enlightenment which they obtain from written matter only after arduous reading. In 1956, Indonesians began watching American movies and found that their own lives looked very different to those in the film. They believed that they had been deprived of their rights, and as a result, their president called Hollywood political radicals and revolutionaries who had greatly hastened political change in the East. Another example is Blackfish, the documentary on the story of a killer whale who killed several people. The purpose of this documentary was to expose how cruelly animals were being treated behind closed doors. And the response was incredible. SeaWorld had to pay $65 million as a settlement and millions of people boycotted the park resulting in an 84% drop in profits. Why did these movies get the responses that they did? It was because movies have the power to simplify. And this is done through a combination of visual and auditory elements. Sound, particularly music, has, abili has the ability to bypass our cognitive abilities and impact our emotional centers. A soundtrack can give us an insight on the psychological state of a character, making it more likely for the scene to impact us emotionally. So music may have been what made you feel sad when Ellie died enough, or motivated when Rocky ran up the stairs of Philadelphia, or like all was right in the world when Eric Little ran down the beach in Chariots of Fire. Another aspect of movies that help simplify ideas is the fact that they can say several things at a time. Two methods used to carry this out are Miss and Sin, which is a modification of space, and Montage, the modification of time. Miss in Sin answers the question, what will be shot and how? And it also chooses what codes to implement to more effectively get the message across. Now you're probably asking, what are codes? It's quite simple, really. It's anything in the shot that helps you understand what the movie is trying to say, or that makes you feel like you're in the setting of the movie. Codes can be anything from props, posture, acting, or costumes, to the setting, lighting, or even the angle of the shot. For example, in this shot alone, we can see the contrast between the capital standard of living and the rest of society. Just by looking at the wall, the colors of the wall and the use of the guards, 
we can tell that this is an oppressive environment. Montage answers the question, how will the shot be presented? By piecing together different scenes. It gives film the ability to combine two meanings to create a third meaning. In the upper left-hand corner, we once again see the use of contrast, but this time in the form of montage. We can see the difference between Rocky's method of training versus his Russian competitor, Ivan Drago. Montage also gives film the ability to weave together different scenes to fit a lot of information into a short period of time. Or they could simply create a general montage. Robert Johnston believed that the power of stories have the ability to shape our beliefs and our actions because they are a central art form in our culture and they tell our collective stories. Having seen the ability of film to influence culture, we shouldn't be asking if film is shaping worldview, but with what purpose. Christians should care about the kingdom of God. This is our worldview. Jesus instructed his disciples to promote the kingdom of God when he told them to teach others what he had taught them of the kingdom. When teaching about the kingdom, Jesus chose to spend his time with the least expected people, the tax collectors and the sinners saying, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus searched out the lost. And today, these are the people not found in the church. Today, these are the people at home watching a movie with their families or with their friends. Just as Jesus directed his conversation towards the kingdom, wherever he was, so can these common places and conversations be safe spaces for the plants of the kingdom, seeds of the kingdom to be planted. Jesus taught by telling parables. The Jewish term for this is Haggadah, and this is a story that goes much deeper than a simple anecdote to entertain. These parables were told to direct people towards God. They were often about ordinary people doing everyday things, making the message easier for Jesus' listeners old and young to understand. The imagery would capture the audience's attention, and once their attention was his, there was so much depth that could be obtained if they truly listened. This same concept can be applied to watching a movie. An example would be watching Batman, The Dark Knight. Now, you could choose to watch this movie because it's a um, thrilling film about a superhero with really cool car or a clown with really bad makeup. But throughout the whole story, there is a struggle between these two characters and their view of the human condition. Bat uh, Joker believes that man is incapable of living by a moral code. He thinks that as soon as chaos comes into the picture, man will reject morality. He also believes that humans are beyond redemption. Batman, on the other hand, believes that despite corruption, man is capable of doing good. He strongly believes in justice and in morality. Using film to shape a kingdom worldview aligns with the classical method of learning and can be measured. Paideia was a method used in classical education where students learned to recognize the true, good, and the beautiful in each of their subjects. For the early Christians, the search for these transcendentals was actually a search for God. Augustine of Hippo believed that truth is ultimately a person, that the supreme good is God, and that beauty draws the soul towards God. Plato believed that the purpose of Paideo was to teach students how to dismiss false things and attach to true things through moral and intellectual purification. Edmund Burke wrote that moral imagination was given to humans by God to provide a map of the world by which we may live. In the classical world, Paideo took place in the polis, the city center where culture happened. And in the Christian communities, it took place in the ecclesia, which translates as gathering and comes from the same context as polis. If we want to lead a life devoted to spreading the kingdom gospel, we should be disciples right in the middle of today's polis. Classical education engages in dialogue with the great tradition, which is the history of Western civilizations, writers, and philosophers. Now, reading their books and their works does not mean that we should agree with all of their ideas. Instead, we should recognize and appreciate the truth in their works and reject the error. In order to develop this discernment, we should view the world through the lens of scripture. Classical education was meant to train the mind and the heart to engage in dialogue and evaluate culture, whether it was historical culture, only preserved through the written word, or present culture, 
which is being preserved through many more forms of media, one of which is film. Having seen the power of movies to shape worldview, we can then ask the questions, how does film affect those who watch it? And how does it portray the meaning of life? Robert Johnson believed that Christians can take two approaches to watching movies. We can reflect analytically on and respond experientially to what we have seen. Theological film critics believe that movies can be a critical analysis of theological ideas and a medium to provoke religious experience. In order to better understand these responses, we will be looking at a matrix. The first axis is the experiential axis, and this helps us determine what kind of experience the movie evoked. The end that is labeled holy is when we, the audience, feel the presence of God. We have a direct encounter with the sacred itself. The other end is labeled the human, and this is when the film truthfully portrays the state of, hum state of humanity which then impacts us as well. The second axis is the critical axis. In the staying within the movie itself, we simply watch the movie as a story. No resources are referred to outside of the film. But in learning from a theological partner, theological resources are referred to to better understand or even judge the character and the movie. Movies are an experience in themselves, and we can use this as a map to help us understand the experience. The revelatory experience that the movie gives us cannot be forced, but there may be people who choose to watch the movie simply as a story and may have felt something that they didn't understand, maybe the presence of God, or they maybe watched the movie and resonated with something in the film that one of the uh, characters did. As Christians, we should be having conversations with these people, making connections between God's great story and the story in the film, and hope that maybe they will understand why they resonated with the humanity in the film, or that they may understand what the presence was that they felt. Some argue that Christians should not watch movies because they are a result of today's sinful culture. It is true that as Christians, we should not conform to this world, but we have also been given the responsibility of planting the seeds of the kingdom and working against the evil of the world. Jesus exemplified this when he immersed himself in culture and he used sinners to change the world, to spread the kingdom. In addition, movies can incite conversations that encourage the renewal of minds. They can be used for good if we learn how to understand the language of film and are able to discern between what is of God and what is of the world. Others argue that watching movies results in mindless consumption, that because, that because they are a passive activity, they are a waste of time. Yes. Movies can be a great avenue for escaping reality. Hitler chose movies to influence his audience precisely because he knew that they did not need to think as much. But he also knew that information was still being absorbed whether the audience was aware of it or not. They were still being influenced. And if you've seen Assumption, you know why I'm using this um, slide. Lastly, some may argue that books are a better medium because they promote imagination, they develop concentration, and they build a stronger vocabulary. While this is true, Movies also have the ability to strengthen these areas. A study from Lancaster University in the United Kingdom found that watching Harry Potter improved a child's imagination. Their study also found that watching movies improved brain function, memory, focus, and productivity. In addition, because movies have both auditory and visual elements, they can fit a lot of information into a short period of time, making it more likely for the audience to remember the content and making it easier for people to understand the message. The audience can be as equally influenced by a movie's message as a book's, but because watching, because Americans spend an average 12 times the amount of time watching movies and the time they spend reading, watching movies is a more effective medium for transmitting messages. As a form of art, movies are the result of humans wrestle with the profound questions of life. What is our purpose? Why is there evil and suffering? What makes something beautiful? Films reflect these questions, sometimes providing answers and sometimes inviting us to wrestle with and seek our own, thus becoming conversations where worldviews are shaped. As Christians who are called to promote the kingdom of God, it is our responsibility to bring the kingdom values and God's truth to the table. And films provide an ideal opportunity. So I invite you to be the voice of God in these conversations. I invite you to listen to what culture yearns for through the movies. There will be voices with hidden agendas, 
and there may be voices who seek to destroy, to promote evil. But if you truly listen, in the midst of darkness, there will also be voices and hearts searching for truth, for light, and for hope, ready for the seeds of the kingdom to be planted, ready to join in celebration of what is true, good, and beautiful, wherever it is found. The more we find his greatness and wisdom, his justice and mercy, and goodness and love, the more we will know him. And the more we know him, the more we will worship him. For film viewers, a journey into film can be similar to that of the Pevensies into the world of Narnia, a journey that transforms worldview. Just as Lucy uses her time in the magical realm to know and experience Aslan, the audience too can learn how to identify real truths, kingdom values, and even experience the nature of God. Thank you. Thank you. 